it came up to me and he just hit me going, I'm like, where the hell is this coming from? You know, so I tried to back him up and um, all of a sudden he hit me. The kid was banging me around like a rag doll. That's when I had a, I had a pocket knife. I pulled it out. The man you see in this room is John W. Dobbs. In 2006, John went down to Florida to see his three children who live with his ex. John brought with him his girlfriend, Diana, and after spending time with his kids, they decided to have a little fun. Before heading back to their home in Georgia, John and Diana decided to go to the Dollhouse Club. While leaving the club, John and his girlfriend were attacked in the parking lot by four men. John, in self-defense, pulled out a knife and started swinging it at the men, injuring three and killing the fourth. John was taken in by Florida police and was brought in for interrogation. Florida is a state with a stand-your-ground law that forgives killings like this if it was done in self-defense. People in the state have used guns in self-defense and have dodged murder charges because of the law. John has a solid case in his favor based on the law as it's written. But will that change after his interrogation? I'm Detective Fagan with Orange County Sheriff's Office Homicide Unit, okay? This is Detective Tom. Homicide? Yeah. We, we investigate all crimes of uh, this type of level. What level is this one? Uh, what are we doing? Stabbing people and cutting people. Mm-hmm. Stuff of that nature. Mm-hmm. Assaults, batteries, and all that stuff. Okay, John, this is what we got. I'm just going to lay it out for you, okay? Mm-hmm. Right now, we got several, several people putting you guys, you and your girlfriend, at the, uh, the uh, dollhouse. Mm-hmm. Putting you being involved in a fight. Give me one second. But like he was saying, yeah, uh, I don't. Can they get in? There's a fight that took place in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we already know all that. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, we're just yeah, here. Okay. We just yeah. want your side of the story of what happened. A classic strategy from detectives is to make the situation sound as innocent as possible. They'll never say they're looking for incriminating evidence. They're just gathering both sides of the story. There's a couple of guys we know that's been stabbed. Okay. So we just want your side of the story of what happened. All right? Because there's always two sides to every story. You know what I mean? And uh, we just want you to tell us what, what exactly happened there. Please. He can go. You just hold it off right now. Okay. And I know he was explaining, but basically this is where the tie goes. Um, we got the hope and all the witnesses. We're looking at you. You got blood all over you. We know you're involved in something. We don't know how it started. We got like one side of it. We got their side of what happened, okay? We're here. We get to do, 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 do they have surveillance cameras for the parking lot? What's interesting is how the first thing John asks in this interrogation is if there are surveillance cameras in the parking lot. He knows that being a popular club, it probably will. And he wants to know if the police have seen the footage of what happened. Typically, people who are guilty of a crime will steer away from any details that could bring them closer to being found guilty. This lends some weight to the fact that John is innocent and that he's trying to point the detectives to evidence that can prove it. Yes, they do. But unfortunately for you, the surveillance cameras only cover the front half of the parking lot. The area where you were? No. Okay. The area where the fight occurred? No. So, so we got their stories. We got the people working there. The stories. The people working there, say. Huh? Again, I did it too. Yeah. Again, we can see John fixating on evidence. He says that they should be able to tell the detectives what happened. A confident claim like this would be almost unheard of if the subject thought they were guilty. We can tell John is eager to give his side of the story. However, the detectives are following a typical interrogation strategy, where they want to hear what John has to say before providing any information. This is to keep the suspect from adapting their story to the facts provided. Yeah, I, we'll get to that. Okay. But I'm just, you know, I'm just laying this out for you. We got those, those stories. We got your girlfriend over here. We're going to talk to her. Yeah, she's here. And uh, 
we get everybody's side of what happened. With that in mind, do you want to tell us what happened? We spoke inside the club. I mean, oh, y'all were inside the y'all met inside the club. Me and one of the guys. And what what transpired there? No, he was just questioning me about six about because you know, one girl calls me daddy, and you know he was playing around talking to the other, talking to the dancers there. And I was like, you know, my girl calls me daddy. And he was like, oh, you got hoes, and I was like. Now why everybody thinks that because somebody called me daddy that I got hoes. And you know. And then he, he just gave me a bad vibe, but I was just like, you know, leave him. So I went outside and I guess they was plotting on me or something. And when you say they how many? I mean, I seen them with at least three, four of the guys. Okay, and were they all outside the club when you got out or were they Well, I was getting in my car. I just heard them say something like Oh, you see, he got the security around him, and he grabbed his girl, and he left. You know, and he called me a player before, so I figured it was just going to be a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, basically, he said that, and I was, like, kind of thrown off, like, you know, they was kind of laughing, so I was like, you know, maybe I said pop talk a little shit, you know. So, I didn't exactly get in the car. I walked to the back of my car. Mm -hmm. But one of the guys started walking toward me fast. Then I caught the vibe. Like, hold on, this guy it looks like he wants to fight. Is this the same one you were talking to inside? No, this is just a different one. As he approached me, he looked like he was ready to fight. Okay. And that's when I said, hold up. I said, we're not going to fight. Where are you at at this time? Standing at the trunk of my car. Okay. So you you were getting in your car and you came around to the trunk here? Yeah, like, you know, I, I, but I didn't realize his friend was going to come over there. So you were actually, like, in conversation or? Well, you know, I heard what he said, and I was getting ready to say, hey, yo, man, you know what I'm saying? There's plenty of girls that go around, whatever, you know, talk shit, whatever, you know. But then I seen this boy rushing towards me, like, you know, like I said, man. So then the boy comes to me, and... And I'm telling this boy, like, yo, there ain't gonna be no fighting or none of that shit, right? You know, my girl's already sitting in the car because I don't lock the door for her. And um, all of a sudden, he hit me, boom. Like, he came up to me and he just hit me, boom. And I'm like, where the hell is this coming from? You know, so I tried to back him up a little bit. And I was dizzy after that, like. Had you had anything to drink? I mean, yeah, I had, I had a drink. How many do you drink? One, two, I mean, what one. As a matter of fact, I only had one. What, what was it? And I mean, Heineken. Heineken beer? Mm hmm Had you had anything, smoke anything, any drugs that would offer your... No, I didn't have anything. No drugs. Anyway. Okay, so you, your recollection is clear what happened. This is a bit of a trap question. Memories aren't perfect, and there are usually inconsistencies in recalling events, whether you're innocent or not. But if you claim that your recollection of a scene is good and there are inconsistencies, then that can be used as evidence to discredit your claims. The detectives are asking this question to hopefully catch John in an inconsistency. Up until the point where, I mean, the, 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 kid, the kid was banging me around like a rag doll. This is the kind of stout one? Huh? This is the one that's stout, the first one? Yeah, but all of them was bigger than me. So he hit you? He hit me, bam. You try to get space? And this is another trap question. John only has a solid case if he can prove his actions were self-defense. The detectives are trying to find any detail they can to prove this wasn't the case. If John says he didn't back away from the fight, that could be evidenced against this being self-defense. What it was was like, he hit me and it was automatically a fight. Like, you know, so I tried to fight. Swing him back and off, and then I was thinking, like, you know, I'm gonna have to hit this guy in his head. Mm -hmm. So I tried to hit him, and then, I, you know, I seen the other guys coming, you know, and that's when I had a, I had a pocket knife. I pulled it out. Okay. You know, where saying? was that? Where was the pocket in knife? In your front pocket? It was in my back pocket. I had originally told them that it wasn't mine, but it was. Then after that, I couldn't remember nothing because the guy had me by my shirt and one of the big guys had me by my shirt. Because one guy came up, I remember that, and, and I was like, I looked at him, he didn't move. Mm -hmm. So I said, this guy's not fighting. 
and I said it out loud. Mm-hmm. So then I just, you know, boom, turned around. And I remember, matter of fact, yeah, my girl got out of the car because they was jumping on me. Mm-hmm. And she tried to push them mm-hmm. off me, like, yo, get off of him, get off of him, you know. And Did you see any of the workers or the bouncers or anything out? I couldn't see nobody. Actually, I couldn't see nobody. I was blacked out. I mean, during the whole process, I was trying to grab, I was getting hit so many times, I was trying to grab focus, but I was still swinging with the knife. All I remember is that I couldn't see, I couldn't really see nothing, and they laid off me for a second. Mm-hmm. And there was a point where, like, like, were you like I, was, I was grabbing at some of this stuff trying to grab it, you know, like, you know, because I know they had the knife, they had the knife trying to cut me, you know what I'm saying? You know which one had the knife? I don't know. Did don't they know. ever cut you? Yeah, they cut my arm. <coughs> the left arm? Yeah, the left arm, they cut it, you know. Okay. Matter of fact, that's actually, you know, around the same time that I pulled out my knife. Again. We can see John's situation easily falling into the category of Florida's standard ground law. John was attacked first. He was outnumbered, and he noticed one of the men attacking him had a weapon. If he had a lawyer, they could easily spin this as a case of self-defense. Of course, all it would take is one slip to change that for John. I was surprised that I didn't go get knocked out. Mm-hmm. Like every second, I was like, oh shit. I'm not knocked out. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can think of. Have you ever been in a fight before? I've been in plenty of fights. Like, so you you know, the surprise is like after the first fight, you know that you can take a lick pretty good. Yeah, I know I could take a lick. I was 40 years, years though. You're I'm 32 scrapped. years old. I don't been fighting. So you've been scrapped before, you know, real fist knuckle down fights. Yeah, when I was a kid. Huh? What I'm saying is, you know, you were, up, you were fighting the whole time. You were trying to keep them off you the whole time. Basically, I'm saying Basically they I thought they would have left me alone when they seen me with the knife. Right, they didn't get you down. No, they didn't get me down. Okay. I don't think so. Yes, I did. Yes, they did, because that's why my knee hurts. This one simple moment will turn out to be one of the most damning for John. He just gave two answers to the detective asking if he was down on the ground. At first, John says he wasn't on the ground, but then quickly corrects his answer to say he was on the ground. This is one of the worst things you can do in an interrogation, because now both of those statements count as a confession, and the detectives can choose which one works better for their report. Remember this moment, and think about how sensitive it can be talking in an interrogation. After it was over with, you got in your car. After after it was over with, actually, I don't really know, all I remember is, trying to stay focused. Mm-hmm. That's the main thing that I remember, just trying to stay focused. So, because, you know, it's, when, the, when the police took me out of the car, mm-hmm. you know, and I was standing up, I just went, like, you know, I was about to pass out. I knew that I would pass out. I passed out before. So I knew that, you know, if I stay up, I'm gonna pass out. So I laid on the car and told them, I'm getting ready to pass out, let me sit down. Okay. But now that, you know, I got my wind and stuff, I'm all right, so boom, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Do you recall yeah. firing your gun? No, I didn't fire the gun. I didn't fire the gun. It's not my gun. This is the point. The point is I didn't even realize I had the gun until I was already in the car and it was on my lap. And I was like, I must have grabbed this for one of them. And I was thinking like either I grabbed it off of somebody's waist or I grabbed it off the ground. Okay, so now so you're saying that the gun that you had is not your gun? It's not my gun. Do you know how that gun got into your car? It, it, I, I mean, I, I must have brought it to the car, but I'm just saying I don't know how I got it in my hands. So you're saying that gun may have belonged to someone else that you yeah. were fighting with? Is that what yeah, you're that's what I'm okay. thinking. This admittedly doesn't look good for John. There were no gun injuries found at the scene of the crime, but the fact that John had a gun in his possession does not look good for him. But in interrogations, you need to be careful with what you say, how you say it, and what you're implying by saying it. This is a difficult point that John needs to be careful with or he could be found guilty. What I did was scare them off and that's probably why they stopped fighting me when I grabbed it. I don't know why they stopped fighting me, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So basically I'm figuring it's that. I'm figuring, matter of fact, I think it's when I hit the floor that I grabbed it. 
But what I did was go to the car and I had it on my lap mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do with it. Is this why you were sitting still in the parking lot? Or had you already started to leave when you were trying to fill with a gun? Excuse me? You put when you fly like the pistol when you told me that you had the pistol. Uh -huh. Where were you checking the pistol while you were still in the parking lot? While you were driving down the road. I don't know. I don't know what's been sitting on was doing that. Do you recall when you pulled your knife out? You know, at the point you pulled your knife out. Do you know if you stabbed someone then or you tried to cut someone then? Can, can you kind of explain that to me? I know first. I wanted to make sure that he'd seen it so he would have backed up. I know that much. So I had to hit the knife you know, like this, and huh? like this, is that how you did? You just, you just bought the knife up like this? Yeah, and then I tried to, like, you know, I, I wanted to hit him, but I was, he was hitting me on this side. As a matter of fact, I remember the beginning, he was hitting me on this side, so I was blocking with my left, and I wanted to hit him with my right. Okay. And it came to the point where I was trying to hit him, like, I had the knife in my hand, but I was trying to hit him with my hand, actually. Okay. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I wanted him to back up, but he just, he just wouldn't back up. So I guess I might have said, fuck it, like, and, and tried to swing at him, like, cut him. You know what I'm saying? So that way, when you went to swing at him, you were actually going to hit him, but the knife cut him? Is that what Well, actually, I was trying to, like, like you know, punch him, hit him type thing. Yeah. It wasn't, like, you know, I knew I wasn't going to get a good hit because my way my hand was positioned. Uh-huh. It was just, like, more I just wanted him. I, I didn't think the whole thing was going to be that serious. It just jumped off crazy for me. So after he, so, so the first one that was there, he was trying to punch you from the left, and you, and you had your knife here and your hand to the right. So when you came around, you swung at him like that, right? Yeah, first I swung at him like that. Yeah. And, and then after that, I, we, after, yeah. after I kept getting hit, I just was swinging. Okay, so you started swinging the knife back and forth? Basically. Now, did you ever, like, when you had the knife, I understand, because I've been in a couple of fights before, and if there's more than a couple of guys that's jumping on me, I'm going to be trying my best to try to get, you know, get, get these guys off of me. So, do you ever recall when you made, like, a slashing motion, and then you stabbed someone? Man. Could, could, okay, look, you know, let me explain to you, because could, could, these guys have been stabbed in the chest, like a puncture wound. In, in the chest, like when he was stabbed like that, instead of cut. Okay, I mean he's not dead or anything, but what I'm saying is, is, is he stabbed? Well, there, well, to tell you the truth, all three of them were stabbed in the chest. Okay, and what those guys are saying is that you stabbed them. Okay, and it's obvious that you did stab them. I'm by them. my car. I'm standing by my car. They come from all the way over there. I, I'm getting hit. I don't know what I'm. I didn't That's know. I never stabbed saying. nobody before. You understand? I just was swinging the, the knife. You understand? Okay, let me ask you this. How many... I didn't even know if I hit them right. right. Okay. I thought I thought maybe I was missing. Sure, I understand. John, but, you know, if if you had to say, how many times do you think you stabbed those guys? Oh, my God. Oh, man. I, I don't know what the hell was going on, man. Okay. I don't know. I was barely able to stand. Okay. The only reason I was really probably standing because the guy was holding my shirt. Okay, I've been in some fights before, okay, and, and I know with the fights going That's on, it. you got all this. I don't want to talk about it. I mean, you're, you're excited. I said, I don't want to talk about it no more. I, just, I told you everything, man. I'm not going to put my stuff in that position. Well, that's up to you. I mean, you can, you, I mean, you can explain to us if you want to, or, I mean, but, but I'm here just trying to help you, man. That's all I'm trying to do. John just had a moment where he realized he was not going to gain anything from explaining more to the detectives, and he's decided to become quiet. The detective mentions that he's only trying to help John, which is something you should never believe from the interrogator. If you have the freedom to stop at any point, you shouldn't let them pressure you into staying. My father, lawyer, I'm gonna figure something out. John, now, okay, okay, let me ask you this last thing. Now, when you went to your car, did you go and sit inside your car, or were you standing out beside your car the entire time? Mm -hmm. you know, before it started? Yeah. Before it started? Yeah, when you first came out of the club, uh -huh. did, did you go to your car? I think I was getting kind of ready to sit down. Okay. And then, you know, they was talking. I didn't understand exactly what they said, so I got out, I stood up. Like, you know, I think I went halfway down. Okay. I think I just unlocked the door for my girl and went halfway down. And then I was trying to understand what they said, like, huh? You know, and you know, and then I was like, you know, oh, my head hurts hurting right now. But 
I think, yeah, I went halfway down. And then I, you know, stood up and, you know, entertained the conversation, whatever, went to the back. I should have never done that shit. I was a fucking horse mistake. Yeah. So you went to sign you, you know, in your car, and then these guys started talking some shit to well, you? They, well, they came, they came up to me. Okay. You understand? They came up to me. I didn't come up to them. And then they swung on me. What stopped you from getting in your car and leave? And here, the detective gives John a loaded question. John said multiple times that he thought it was a conversation, and as soon as he realized it was a fight, he couldn't leave. Yet the detective phrases the question like, John did have the choice to leave, which makes this a dangerous question to answer. When? When, as, as, I mean, when, they, when you were at your car and he started running his mouth, what stopped him from getting in your car and leave? I, I guess because I was, in, I was bored, I was surprised the club was closing at 2 o'clock. And, you know, I, I figured, you know, we was just going to talk shit, you know. I figured I was going to introduce myself mm -hmm. to more people. That's it. I figured I was going to be social. Excuse me. Yes, yes how you doing? Um, I was saying, is it possible that if I'm going to get up and me that y'all can give my property to my brother? Yes, 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 I got to keep me. Huh? Yeah, you're going to be charged. I'm going to be charged with what? Huh? Angry bands. Angry bands. Huh. I mean, I mean, it's not obvious self-defense. <laughs> I mean, I mean, where, where does aggravated battery come in? I'm getting jumped by three, four guys. I mean, where does that come in? You, you, you were at your car. I had an opportunity to what? Leave. To leave, but I didn't know I had a problem yet. Do you understand that? I'm, I'm trying to understand that. Okay, I didn't know I had a problem. We didn't have words of conflict at any point in time. Do you understand? Okay. We had no words of conflict. I did not know I had a problem. Why would I leave? John has a point here. And it's a point that probably could have been better made by a lawyer in court. Because making a case to a judge and jury is a lot different than making your case to detectives in an interrogation. Mm -hmm. You understand? You and, then I, and then I didn't go towards them. I was at my car. Mm -hmm. You understand? I don't have a, I don't have the right to stand by my car. I mean, this is going to ruin my life. It's going to ruin my girl's life and everything. And 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 I know that you guys got to know that basically there's there's no there's no there's no way that I I was um I initiated anything. I mean, I don't know what the, I don't understand how I was aggravated. What'd you say? Battery. Battery. Because I'm getting the hell beat out of me and I'm just barely awake doing the whole thing. You understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, where where does it what sense does that make? I mean, how how do you do that? How do you how do you judge that as aggravated battery? I mean, I wasn't even aggravated. It was all self defense. As the moment that they stopped hitting on me is the moment that I got in my car and left. Yeah, but uh, based on all the facts of the case. What the, facts? The facts. The people that were there, that was the uh, valley and everything. Yeah, did they say... Based on what you told me and based on what they told me, there was opportunity enough for you to leave. You said you weren't down. And there it is again. Remember when John corrected himself and said he was on the ground? The detectives took his first statement as and put that in their report. They technically have John confessing not to being on the ground. That's the official story now. And that will make it so much more difficult for John to argue against in court. John started out having an advantage in this case, but now it's probably going to jail because he misspoke. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I told you they was holding me. Mm -hmm. I told you they was holding but me, and that's probably the reason why I was standing swinging too. No, I was swinging with one hand. With one hand. Mm -hmm. I wasn't free swinging. I couldn't walk anywhere. I couldn't even see where the hell I was going. Uh, half the time I'm bouncing off of my car. After his trial, John was sentenced to prison on three charges of battery and one of homicide. He's still in jail to this day, and his lawyer is trying to get a new trial for him due to several issues with the initial trial. Nevertheless, John has still had to spend over a decade of his life in prison for reasonably defending himself. He probably agreed to be interrogated because he was sure he was innocent. But a few mistakes in his interrogation led him to paying the price for it. The moral of John's story is that even if you know you're innocent, 
One slip or mistake in the interrogation can ruin everything for you. Never agree to be interrogated. Ask for a lawyer as soon as you can. They have more legal knowledge than you do and will know how to convey that you're innocent while avoiding common pitfalls that detectives like to set up.